In the first robotics competition, designing a robot is half the battle. Building and competing at a high level requires a solidly built, tested, and well-kept machine, parts of the process that are often overlooked. Just two decades ago, some teams still struggled to field robots that could drive across the field, let alone score points in an effective manner. Over the years, FIRST has introduced two key options for teams that have raised the floor of the competition. On this episode, we're covering the history of the Kitbot, from the early days of the Kit of Parts to the debut of the Robot in Three Days and the Everybot, coming up on Rewind. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Before the start of the 2003 season, FIRST identified a need in the community for a standardized, provided drivetrain. In this era, moving across the field with working motors and electronics was considered a difficult task, described by some as a task that teams dedicated two weeks to out of their six-week time limit. 2003 was the first year of the kit drivetrain, a set of parts and instructions that were given in the kit of parts to every team, with no option to opt out. Teams were provided two gearboxes that used a 90-degree helical gear reduction with the drill motor and transmission. The 2004 design used a sprocket and chain reduction with the same gearbox. Both chassis used aluminum cross members. In 2004, components from the 2003 drivetrain were also provided. Unfortunately, these designs only worked with a narrow range of robot designs and didn't really hold up well to the 2003 or 2004 seasons. Many teams still opted to create custom drivetrains, even if they didn't move for most of the season. The 2005 kit chassis was introduced as the standard chassis and was completely redesigned by IFI specifically for the season. Based on feedback received during the 2004 team forums, it was decided by FIRST to brainstorm potential improvements to the KOP, and in particular, the kit drivetrain. Improvements in functionality and reductions in cost were both heavily emphasized as goals for the new drive. From IFI's website, the Kitbot chassis was designed to provide FRC teams with a simple, reliable drivetrain design, which emphasizes versatility and configurability. It has many adjustment options, can be constructed in numerous size and orientation configurations. All teams should keep in mind, there is no right way to construct a robot drivetrain. This chassis is designed to facilitate creation of many different drive designs, depending on a team's chosen requirements. The kit frame saw market improvement for the 2005 season, and although it took time for the community to warm up to the idea, it became a staple of FRC competitions following. It was a proven solution that allowed versatility and creativity without the sacrifice of time dedicated to being able to move. Kitbot DriveBase went through many iterations over the next few seasons, and in 2013, the AndyMark am one for You chassis debuted. This was the base of the modern system and was given as an option to opt out versus opt in. Over the next decade, the, the level of play would evolve and the number of teams in the FRC program would grow exponentially. With the level of communication available, members of the community began to post open source designs days after kickoff that raised the playing field. The problem, teams that needed that boost often weren't aware of these designs. FRC needed to address the needs of these teams that were often just building and fielding the kit drivetrain. The Kitbot made its debut in the 2024 season, providing an official open source design that accomplished some of Crescendo's tasks. It was the culmination of the community's efforts to raise the floor of the competition, providing a base build for teams with lower resources. A team of alumni and mentors pioneered the early open source robot design starting in the 2013 season with a program called Robot in Three Days. Now synonymous with content and design exploration across kickoff weekend, this group documented their design process using an accessible method for teams, live streams, and videos on YouTube. The RA3D team inspired a number of designs in season, but also inspired a thread called the MCC, or Minimum Competitive Concept, in the same season. 
These concepts would inspire a number of builds in the future and explored the idea of what the ideal low resource alliance partner could be. More teams joined RA3D in the future years across colleges, states, and countries. In 2016, first suppliers began releasing a build based on the minimum competitive concept, which showcased ideas built with products from their website. These featured a build within reach of teams using just off-the-shelf parts. The MCC and RA3D designs became staples at events, with robots that would normally lack resources to build something of that level of complexity. In the following years, RA3D and MCC designs began to grow more complex, leading to some designs that would be outside of the target team's resource levels. In the 2018 season, Powerhouse Team 118, the Robonauts, developed a program that built on the RA3D and MCC concepts, building an affordable, robust, and simplistic robot for less than $1,000. They created a robot designed to play one aspect of the game well, built from basic tools and easily sourced parts. They called it the Everbot. The Everbot became wildly popular in FRC over the next few seasons, inspiring not only lower resource teams, but also served as a stepping off point for others. With available parts, it was easier than ever to create and iterate on a given design. However, these designs still weren't reaching the teams that needed them most. Despite bringing the revolution that it did, the Everbot was still a very in-the-know sort of design. FRC recognized this issue, and in the 2024 season, the Kitbot debuted. The kit of parts has evolved to meet the changing needs of, needs of teams over the years, including changes to what is in the kit available online and the kit chassis. According to the feedback received at the end of each season, one of the most requested additions to the kit of parts from teams were pieces from the Everybot. In August of 2023, the FRC blog outlined the plan to include a base build kit bot in the 2024 kit of parts as a guided build, not intended to be a full solution to Crescendo, but as a functional machine with the ability to iterate and build on. The kit bot was not intended to be a bolt together full solution and required some manufacturing from the team side. There were 528 kit bots that competed in the 2024 season, or 15% of teams. Many more teams use the kitbot to train new members and have a robot to practice against and prototype with. Other teams use the kitbot as a backup, a safety net just in case their far-fetched designs didn't end up working out before their first event. As the first year of the program, the 15% of teams is expected to grow next season, as more teams become familiar with the capabilities of the kitbot and understand how it compares to their resources. FRC's pioneering work in the early open source design realm has also influenced how FTC functions in the early hours of the game. In 2017, Robot in 30 Hours started, where FTC teams would gather to try out different designs for the first 30 hours after the game reveal. Soon, suppliers would join in, creating MCC designs within their systems, much like they had for FRC. This system has provided more interconnectedness than ever for FTC teams promoting information exchange and even leading to the pilot year of Open Alliance and the FTC Everybot for teams this season. While we have yet to see the impact of the FTC Everybot this season, the design has focused on accessibility and what that means for a different program level. It is designed to work with multiple build systems and be functional at different stages of the build process, providing solutions that could fit within a team's existing concepts. While this program is still in its infancy, we can only hope that it has a great impact for FTC, as it has for FRC. From the 2003 season's kit drive base to the 2024 kit bot, the base build for FIRST Robotics competition has evolved with the needs and standards of the community. While the kit bot was a result of the work of so many groups and information put out by the community, its future will be determined by how teams continue to use it. The KOP will continue to evolve and change as the technology changes, but until then, Thanks for the rewind. Make sure you subscribe to Fun Robotics Network's YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the show, give it a like. We're testing out a new format for the show, so let us, let us know if it worked for you in the comments or any other topics that you want to see next time on Rewind. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following.
Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.